A big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. The summer is here and it's time to start barbecuing and you know what's going to happen. Everybody, almost everybody, owns a grill like this, is going to take it out of the shed and wants to start barbecuing. And then they figure out like, hey, how the, how, how did I do that again with the ribs? Do, the, like the, the method thing? That's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to show you guys how to cook low and slow on a kettle style grill. Now you know, nothing, nothing's gonna happen right now, right? Until you hit that subscribe button. It's right there, waiting for you. You done? All right, let's start cooking. Oh no, that's what I normally do. We don't cook anymore today. Well, we cook, but we gotta talk technique first. Because basically Morrison told me to do this because he was struggling with something. Can I say that? Is that? <laughs> He's He's grinning a little bit, but in a bad way. I'll get you back. That's what he's thinking. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it right, so Morrison knows how to do it. So uh, This is the Napoleon Kettle Grill, but basically it's a kettle grill. It goes for every style and brand of kettle grill. The only thing that Napoleon has that most brands don't have is like this super heavy duty cast iron grill grate. Super awesome. But what we need to look at before we start looking at techniques and methods is heat. I want to show you guys what the differences in different types of heat are. Oh, thank you for bringing me the, the planks. <laughs> I, sorry, I didn't have any paper laying around. I'll just explain it with these planks. There are two types of heat. The first one is radiation heat. So if you got your charcoal or briquettes, whatever set up, and, and it's all lit up, one big fire, then you have radiation heat. And radiation heat is going in all directions, to the sides, even to the bottom. This is the friend of grilling steaks because you can build up a beautiful crust. But it's also the enemy of juicy, low and slow cooked meat. Now let's draw that again. So we have a pile of charcoal, and this time we are talking about convection heat. And convection heat is basically hot air rising. And this is going slow and it's gentle. And this is the friend of low and slow cooking and juicy ribs or juicy pulled pork or even better, a juicy brisket. That's cool and all on planks, but you guys wanna see it in real life. So I'm gonna show you all the techniques that are out there and why they work or why they don't work using this explanation. Not a friend to juicy ribs, definitely a friend to juicy ribs. First, I'll show you the way that most barbecue brands promote the way to cook low and slow with an aluminum tray in the center, then charcoal on both sides of that aluminum tray, smoke wood on the charcoal, water in the tray, and then light it up with fire starters. In itself, this is not a bad method, but there's one big problem. So what we created is a low and slow fire. The fire starter is going to light up the charcoal and it's going to slowly move its way along the charcoal, burning up the pieces of smoke wood that we added. And that way you're gonna have a low and slow cook for a longer session. But there's a problem with this method. If you look at the schematics of things, you got the water tray and you got the meat up there. Beautiful slab of ribs waiting to be cooked. Then you got your charcoal lit up on both sides. It's nice and smoky. But here comes the radiation heat hitting your meat. It's not shielded off by the water. And that's a big no-no because radiation heat is a friend of grilling steaks, but an enemy of doing low and slow cooking sessions with juicy meat. This method is going to make your ribs unnecessary dry. Even though you got this water pan here that's evaporating, it's not going to do much for your ribs. As long as you got the radiation heat hitting them, ha, there's a better way to do it. So this method, no good. Another popular method is to put the water pan on one side, charcoal on the other side, of course, again, with the smoke wood and lighting it up with a fire starter, getting it up low and slow. But again, this method is no bueno. You got your water pan, you got your charcoal, but here's our meat and we got all that radiation heat, that bad heat going onto a meat, drying it out. No good. Don't do it, Morrison. Don't, do, don't use this one. This method is called the snake method and it's a very popular method and for good reasons because you can have a low and slow cooking session for such a long time with super stable temperature 
In this method we're placing briquettes on the base of our grill, putting them side by side all along the edge. Then we're going to put another layer on top of it and place smoke wood on top of that. Light it up on one side and then the fire is just going to run through all of that circle. That's why it's called a snake. It's basically, it looks like a snake. Kind of. But again, you're stuck with that radiation heat. That's going to dry out your meat. Even if you're going low and slow, that's not going to have a positive effect. Now it's a lot less because you're going way slower. So it definitely works this method, but it's not ideal. It's not perfect. Now I'm going to show you the best way to do it. I'm placing big chunks of firewood on one side of the grill, creating a niche. And in that niche, I'm putting my hardwood lump charcoal. Remember, hardwood lump charcoal. It works better than briquettes because it burns clean and briquettes have filling and that filling, it's gonna smell like something. It's gonna give you an odor and it's gonna give you smoke that's not natural. We don't need any extra smoke wood because we already have our hardwood sitting here. This is beech tree and it's one of my favorite woods to smoke with. I put a fire starter on one side and we're going to light it up with our torch. And by the way, get one of these because it's really safe. Like the only possible way to get a flame to point down while you're not burning your hands. See, that's kind of cool, right? No flame shooting up, a lot safer than any other way to set your grill on fire. By lighting up the fire starter on one side, it's going to start a fire here and then burn its way slowly to the other side, creating a low heat for a longer period of time. Back to the drawing boards, because now you can see the schematics of things. You can see that the charcoal is lower than the block of wood, and so the radiation heat can't touch the meat. Basically, the meat is protected, which is on this side. All you get now is convection heat going up and that's the beauty of a kettle grill. It's a round thing. So all that convection heat is just going around in that grill, basically creating a convection oven. Hot air, smoke flavors, making your ribs, pulled pork or brisket turn out perfect. Now I can put the grill grates on and I'm going to set it to the lowest position. The radiation goes up from here. So all this part all is a safe zone and i just happen to have some beautiful st louis style cut ribs well look at the thickness this is more of a pork belly we don't have to add a water pan we don't have to buy expensive systems that will fit in our grill we can set it up this way and basically just let it run until it's fully cooked but i'm adding my thermometer to make sure that I get the right temperatures. A lot of people might laugh about the fact that we use a thermometer, but with thick ribs like this, a thermometer is a great way to keep check because I'm looking for a core temperature of 92 degrees Celsius. And with the thermometer in and this super safe way of cooking, we can relax. Just make sure when you start, you have the top vent all the way open and your bottom vent almost all the way closed. And with the bottom vent almost all the way closed, the fine tuning is done with the top vent. When it's running between 120 and 140 degrees Celsius, you're running smooth and you're safe. How much time did it cost? We're in? Uh, we took, it took around five hours to cook this, yeah. but normally it takes less time to cook it. Like if you uh, do an open cook like that, it takes around four to four and a half hours to cook, but these ribs are so thick. Yeah, these are really, really thick. And, and they're insanely juicy. Yeah, basically. Look, just, I'm gonna show you right now, look at that. Clean off the bone, but still, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's still, you got a lot of pull. We tried this method, well, you tried this method. You also- This is my go-to method. But you also showed me the other ones. Yeah. Did you ever try those before? I like tried back them in all. The day? I tried every method that was available online. I tried everything. But the funny thing is like, it comes down to understanding what the heat does. What types of heat do you have? What does the heat do? Basically, the radiation heat is just gonna dry out your meat. Yeah. No matter how good the quality is bad for low and slow cooking. That, that's what I thought about the snake. I mean, the snake, it sounds beautiful. It's a cool, cool name. But it works. But it, it, the it snake, still is radi radiation heat. Yes, so it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people struggle with cooking the perfect ribs or brisket or 
and then this is improving your chances to get better ribs all you need to do is like get a log of wood and it doesn't cost anything extra no. it's the firewood that i have if you don't have firewood firewood's cheap and so, it still has smoke flavor as a smoke green inside yeah i i think also that that's like that that's what people need to understand and especially for a starting barbecuer like me is that everything it's like basic science everything reacts different to heat but seriously i hope it helps people to get to the next step and be more successful at cooking ribs i think basically. you should show them more um in in the future what is what if you think this is valuable and this is something you want to know more about like things things like this I want to see in the comments whether you guys are interested in this, if we need to make more of this, and we would love to know what you think about this, because this is my experience and my opinion, and if you have a different opinion, I would love to know about it, because hey, that's what we're here for. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. Uh, big big thanks to the patrons. Use your members. Yeah, all them. All them. Big Patreon, thanks. YouTube members, all of you, you guys freaking rock. Shout out to Ava. Who Shout out to Ava. She just ate a whole chicken, so she's knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a really good trick. Yeah. To feed her before actually eating. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we woke her up. Mm. You want some? You want some?